You remember when we were in uh, Dubuque at the Canfield and we couldn't stay there, but that guy came out and was telling us how he lived with chickens? We couldn't determine if it was, like, within the Canfield that he owned chickens? Yeah, like, he might have been, like, in his room with chickens. Are you getting, like, (laughs) room service fresh Canfield eggs? Happy Thanksgiving, I'm Dan. And I'm Eddie. And we're the Deathless Dogs. In honor of Thanksgiving, we are cracking into a wild turkey limited release. I picked this up when I was out hunting for various whiskeys on my birthday week. I was looking for any one of the Master's Keep series, and I happened to come across this one. You may remember in the last video I said this is the very first batch from 2015. I have this because the store I got it from had it in their basement unknowingly for like five years, I guess. At that time, this is the oldest wild turkey they had ever released, 17 years. This is the first limited release wild turkey put out after Eddie Russell became master distiller. It's also interesting because it's barrel proof, but it's only 86 proof. Let me get the exact stats so I don't, uh... yeah, 86.8 proof. So, and but that is barrel proof. The reason that this is a barrel proof at such a low alcohol percentage is because it lost more alcohol than water during the aging process. Mm. And that's due to it not reaching those higher temperatures where the water started to evaporate off. And that's because this was stored in brick warehouses. Now you were saying stone warehouses. I That makes me wonder if they use that like concrete flooring that goes like six to nine feet underground that just kind of traps the cold in. I don't know. It's brick. I mean, it's not the like traditional metal or wood brick house. Right. I think the presentation on it is super cool. I like this big box that has like a magnetic flap on the front here. Yeah, I was initially asking you how to even open that because I was confused by what was going on. I kind of t- was too when I first picked it up. I'm like, what is, like, I was going like this, trying to slide it out. <laughs> it was released in 2015. I spent 17 years in the barrel. This went into a barrel, like, when we were in middle school. Like, we were what? Like, do the math This here. probably went into the barrel, like, when you and I met in German class, if you think of it. <laughs> it would have been about seventh grade. Wow. That's weird. That is weird. Um, and we're going to just drink it for Thanksgiving. Yeah. That's neat. I think this is the oldest bourbon I've ever had. 17 I, years, I think, yeah. I, I mean, I I've think. had older scotch. We've got Laphroaig 18. But yeah. Bourbon-wise. In terms of bourbon, yeah. Usually with bourbon, I feel like you're hard-pressed to find anything with the exception of, like, Pappy. That, Victor's 20. Like, there's a couple, but. And those are very hard to find. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. I think it's yeah. going to be good. We can start carving the turkey here, I guess. Do you have any anticipation of what the flavor profile might be? I like to sometimes guess. Well, according to this, we're, we're talking caramel, vanilla, spice with subtle oak finish. I'm not expecting burn because of the low proof point. Right. It'll be interesting to, to try a bourbon, though, that is that low proof, but is naturally that low proof. Like, it's not because they watered it down. This is just what it came out like. That color is pretty complex, too. I think this is a beautiful bottle. Yeah. With, like, the etched turkey on here. The shape. It's got like spent a lot of time on this. A heavy thing. copper cork. It's a beautiful bottle to have on the shelf. I mean, would you display it with the bottle or would you put it back in the giant box? I think the bottle is more attractive than the box. I'd hold on to the box, but I think it'll go right behind my head with its brothers and sisters of the Turkey Nation. All right, Wild Turkey 17-year-old Master's Keep batch 0001. Let's throw it to a guest bottle popping. Fresh bottle popping! All right, and that, of course, is Tyler from Space Heaters and his lovely lady, Taylor. It's always great to see someone else partaking in the bottle popping. Yeah, thanks for sending the video in. Thanks for the shout-out to the Red Stir that you threw in there at the end. That was cool. We appreciate it. I feel like you got a hold for cork here. You just released history. Yeah. Feel that cork. That's a heavy boy. Very approachable now. It's like you can really... Vanilla, but like vanilla bean, you know. I can see that. Not like vanilla ice cream, like you know, bucket ice cream. More 
like the vanilla bean, like when you chop it open yourself and scrape out the seeds. I get that. Yeah. There also seems to be like a hint of like squeezed orange or something. There is some kind of sense. there is some kind of fruit. Like it's either orange peel or like the spray of an orange. I can't tell if that's what I'm calling that or not. I'm getting a lot of vanilla bean now that you've mentioned it, but also maybe a little bit of that like creme brulee style, you know, like a baked caramely like the top of it dessert. Yeah. The smell is really good, though. It's actually reminiscent in a lot of ways of Thanksgiving, I think, strangely enough. There is a bit of, like, an herbal quality in there that I can't really pin down because I feel like I just need to go to the food co-op and buy all the herbs and just smell them. You can't do that smell test within the co-op because the co-op has a smell. Yeah. That's just distinctly food co-op. You could blindfold me and drive me around for an hour and then walk me in there and I'd know exactly where I was. Oh, yeah. Be like, oh, we're at the food co-op. <laughs> <laughs> it's that weird smell i think it's because they have like the deli in there that makes the paninis i don't even think it's that because i mean this smell has existed prior to de- like deli paninis <laughs> like as a child i remember that sp- i think it is all the fresh spices all combining into one scent or something but i feel there. like supermarkets that aren't the co-op have those spices as well and they don't smell quite the same as the co-op yeah but i feel like the co-op is is dealing more in the bulk spice game you know what i mean maybe the, the it's more frequently stirred because people are getting people more go out. to the co-op to get the spices yeah i think it is they're they're spice lords <laughs> the co-op. spice traders spice lord mother mother <laughs> <laughs> just monster magnet yeah. yeah that song was probably popular when this one <laughs> yeah the history that we've released that's yeah. what we're getting clank them and drink them as smooth as that was on the nose it seems to have carried over into the taste some of those baking dessert style foods seem to really come forward in the flavor i think yeah i stand by my statement on like a creme brulee or a custard with a little bit of that caramel and vanilla kind of blending together. And then on the tail end, there's a bit of that oaky bitterness, I think. Yeah, I'm getting creamy kind of mouthfeel thing that's playing with that vanilla pretty nicely. Towards the finish, getting a little bit of that oaky bitterness, almost a, uh, I want to say like tobacco. You know what I mean? Like fresh, like the pipe. Well, that's kind of what Russell's Reserve reminds me of. The single barrel. I've always kind of said it's a bit of that tobacco flavor. And maybe a little bit of like a a black tea style vibe or something. You know, it's herbal. It's not really drying, that drying feeling. No. Um, it's not aggressively oaky, which I've heard some of the, like the older bourbons, like the oak can kind of start to take over because it's been in there so long. Like after drinking this and just kind of sitting on it and kind of letting my palate adjust to what I just took in, there's a bit of like dark chocolatey, like crumble vibes. I don't know that I, I taste it as dark chocolate, but maybe that bitterness level would be the best way to describe the level of bitter going on here. A 70% cacao, you know, that little bite of bitterness to it at the end. And it, it evolves with each sip. It's kind of changing as it goes through. That last sip I got, I don't want to say mint, but it, it came through herbal and like cooling. Similar to uh, Russell's Reserve Rye. Yeah. Where it's no, not necessarily minty, but it has that herbal, fresh kind of feeling to it on the last sip. So. I didn't really know what to expect going into this. I'm not disappointed at all, and I'm happy. I think that this has lived up to the hype that you've put it on. We've been looking forward to this, and I think, in my opinion, I'm happy and honored to have been able to try it. Yeah, I don't have any regrets on the purchase here. As a big fan of Wild Turkey that I am, as far as would I buy it again, I think I would. I will buy other Master's Keep releases for sure. And I would buy this one again if I saw it. I think it's a really interesting bottle. Some people would argue that at that price point for a 43% alcohol bottle, that's a bit steep. Yeah, and I would agree with them with it being overpriced for being as low proof as it is if it was a situation where they were watering it down and stretching it out. If they found 17-year-old barrels and then proofed them down to this, you'd be like, you're out of your damn mind. Right. But this is just kind of a special bottle 
very, very rare in its story, in its age, in its, uh, in its proof. This is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, commonly known as Drinksgiving. Do you have a family that does that at Thanksgiving, that does the, like, what are you thankful for thing? That's I, where I'm coming from. I don't. That's, like, part of the reason for Thanksgiving, is what are you thankful for. But to, like, announce it to everybody? Maybe. I, I, don't uh, I, I, I don't come from that sort of thing. I think my aunt tried to do that to us one year, and we, everybody just laughed at her. <laughs> <laughs> Top four Thanksgiving side dishes. Okay, yeah. I feel like I can do this. Hold on, I gotta think about it. Thanksgiving side dishes. You all start thinking about it too and leave it in the comments what your top four are. We're not counting desserts. Not counting Not desserts. counting We're going desserts. side We're dishes. We're just going sides. <laughs> the hash brown cheesy potatoes. Good number call. one overall. Second, I'm going back to potatoes with garlic mashed potatoes and gravy. Third, side dish. We got the wild rice with cranberry thing my mom makes. I like that thing. Last, but not least, it's like a pumpkin with, I believe, walnut and like chocolate chunk bread. <laughs> and like it's served as a side dish. Sure. But not like a dessert because we'd have the pies for dessert. It's a sweet treat mid-meal. Yeah. My top four, number one, stuffing. And it can be like shitty stovetop or like authentic giblet craft number two my mom makes like the sweet potatoes with the marshmallow on top that's my like the sweet within the meal that's your you change know? up third would be i believe some people call it corn pudding some people call it scalloped corn we refer to it as corn stuff number four this is tough i mean i feel like I feel like mashed potatoes are just so necessary. So I'm going to say mashed potatoes. What I want to say is mac and cheese, because I started the mac and cheese revolution in my family last year on Thanksgiving. And I don't feel like I can rank it as four since I've only eaten it for one year so far. <laughs> I gotta look. But if it was that great and you like revolutionized but Thanksgiving. I got to look back. I got to look back at a, at a winning tradition. How do you always have such different things than me in your top four, except for like with Reese's during Halloween? Because well, we, we're different people. I know, but like so different. Hit us with your top four side dishes. Some of you are going to say green bean casserole, and I want you to know you're wrong. Like, I want you to know you're wrong. You're, you're incorrect. But anyway, thank you, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for watching. Hope you... Uh, are safe this holiday and enjoy your time with whoever you spend it with. Hopefully you drink some. Hit the like button if you haven't yet. We're very thankful for likes, I can say that. And even more thankful for shares and comments. From the Western Wisconsin Whiskey Emporium, thanks for watching. So, for a while my mom tried to make like the Thanksgiving bird be a pheasant? I have vivid memories of this. Do you remember me being pissed about it? Like, yeah, because I ate at your house the day after Thanksgiving, like in high school once. Okay. And, and it, it was, was pheasant? It was pheasant. And you were, like, upset about it. Oh, yeah. It's, like, <laughs> one of my favorite foods is, like, a turkey leg. I fucking... Yeah. Like, I, I thoroughly enjoy turkey legs. But these were birds your dad shot. Right? Oh, and there's just, like, the spray pattern from him just janking out a shot, like, cr close range. <laughs> just peppering a pheasant just... with bird shot. Is this an every year thing, though? No, they, they had to revert back. I, they I, I just, to I just <laughs> couldn't do it. Like, I, I put a stop to it. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, you're having pheasant for Thanksgiving. You count me out. <laughs> Clack. <laughs>